Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to chapter 7 of this book. In this chapter, we are going to discuss language and communication. The main topics of this chapter include endangered languages and different languages in the United States. The main objectives of this chapter include 1. To understand how to prepare for presentations. 2. To use vocabulary related to language and communication in speaking. 3. To use words and expressions related to work. The vocabulary log of this chapter include words like senses, compare, predominant, makeup, implement, estimate, disappear. Extinct Criterion Concerned Tradition Viewpoint Increase Exclusively And Linguist Now, you are going to listen to a lecture after you listen to it, choose the best summary. Good afternoon. Today's lecture is about different languages spoken in the United States. The Modern Language Association has put together data on the numbers of speakers and the locations of the 30 most commonly spoken languages in the United States. Let me first explain how the information was gathered. The data came from U.S. Census information. In addition to the usual census questions about number of family members and age, people were asked about language. If a language other than English was spoken at home. If the answer was yes, then the person was asked to name the language. You might be surprised at how many different languages were reported. 300. Yes, 300 different languages are spoken in the United States. The Modern Language Association focuses on the 30 most common languages. Of course, English is the number one language. Um, Spanish is the second most common. Uh, Chinese is the third. And French is the fourth. Now, the Modern Language Association has put all this information together in different ways. So, for example, you can look up a particular language, let's say uh, Korean, and see how many speakers there are throughout the United States. There are almost 900,000 Korean speakers in the United States. Then you can see how that compares to the total number of speakers of languages other than English. So, of the people who speak another language, 2% are Korean speakers. It's also possible to see how many Korean speakers there are in different areas. Two main areas of concentration are Southern California and Washington State. Now, another way you can look at the information is by starting with place. The entire United States, a state, a county, or a city. So, um, for example, looking at the state of Texas. In Texas, English is spoken at home by just over 68% of people. Of the people who speak another language, 86% speak Spanish. And it's only 1 or 2% for any of the other languages. So, Spanish really is the predominant language other than English in Texas. Now, you can then compare that information to other states. For example, looking at the state of New York. In New York, a little over 72% of people speak English at home. Of the speakers of other languages, 49% speak Spanish, and then 8% speak Chinese, 6% speak Italian, and 
four percent speak Russian and four percent speak French. So you can see that there are a lot of Spanish speakers in New York, but there are also other languages spoken, more so than in Texas. Okay, so there are different ways to look at this data. Let's talk about possible ways this information could be used or why it's important. I'd like to open this up for discussion. Do you have any ideas? Yes, in the front row. Um, I think this could be important for educational purposes. You know, so people know what kinds of classes might be needed in the schools and things like that. And um, I think it's also important to understand the cultural makeup of the United States. Yes, definitely. Anyone else? Yes? Isn't it also important to be aware of possible language change? You know, if one language is being used less or more over time? Yes, absolutely. Okay, we're out of time, but we're going to talk about language change next week. So, we'll discuss it more then. Okay now, what do you think the best summary of a lecture, of the lecture you have listened to? Okay, here we have three choices. Number one, is it the number of different languages used in the United States? Or B, data about language use in the United States and how it might be used? Or why it's important to look at language use in the United States? What do you think? I believe that the best summary of the lecture we have listened to is C. Why it's important to look at language use in the United States. Thank you very much and see you next time.